Welcome everybody and for this video I'll be explaining and discussing how to um, name alcohols. So uh, this video will be this video won't be very long it will be pr uh, pretty short and this, the way I've structured this video is basically go over all the steps with you guys okay so there are there are four steps you guys need to know in order to name alcohols so I'll just briefly go through all those steps and then uh, go over one example and as we're going through that example uh, I will refer back to those steps okay so um, let's get started the first step you guys need to know is to determine the longest chain the longest carbon chain containing the carbon bonded directly to the alcohol okay so that's the first step second step is that the carbon okay so again this carbon is the same as this carbon so we're referring to the carbon directly attached to the alcohol will be assigned the lowest possible number okay so the lowest number possible um, the third step is so much a little bit um, you're going to name the longest chain replacing the e ending to o ending okay so if you have um, pentane you will change it to pentanol heptane heptanol stuff like that okay so that's how you you'll change the e ending to o ending and the last part to this step is to make sure that the carbon number is included when naming the chain okay so this part will make more sense as I go through the example the fourth and final uh, step is pretty standard um, list the substituents with assigned numbers alphabetically so let's go over an example okay so let's move this out of the way let's go over an example okay and this example won't be uh, very difficult um, the whole point of this example is to just get the the message across just to for you guys to understand how to do it okay and uh, so if you guys get really confusing looking structures if you follow the steps that I presented to you guys you and if you break it down the way I've showed you guys um, it will be really easy to tackle those really difficult problems also so all that matters is to be systematic in the way you approach problems okay so again so we'll look at a pretty simple example um, let's just say we have this um, just to zoom in just a little bit um, let's just say you have this this carbon chain right we have an alcohol at this position right here and we'll simply say we have a bromine here and um, this little piece over here okay so now we have to uh, so again let's let's try to determine the name of this this alcohol um, again let's follow the steps that I presented for you guys okay first step is to determine the longest chain containing the carbon bonded to the alcohol okay so again that's the first step okay so determine the longest chain containing the carbon bonded to the alcohol so the longest chain we have to, de we have to determine the longest chain first okay and it has to include the carbon which I have uh, made it very large as you can see here so made a pretty a large circle this has to be included in the longest chain so we can count it as this one two three four five six seven right so one two three four five six seven that could be one of the possibilities for the parent chain or we can count it as one two three four five six seven eight nine so uh, let's actually add an extra carbon here okay so it'll be ten okay so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so it'll be a ten carbon chain so that's the longest possible chain okay so first step is satisfied we have determined the longest chain containing the carbon bonded to the alcohol so here you go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay step two so we know it's going to be a ten carbon chain as the parent chain Okay. Step two states that the carbon, right? This carbon is referring to the one bonded to the alcohol. This carbon will be assigned the lowest possible number. Okay. So there are two ways to number 
the parent chain, okay? We can number it from basically right to left or from left to right. So if you go from here to here, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this carbon will be assigned carbon number nine. If you go from right to left, basically, it would be one, two. This carbon will be assigned number two. Step two of the little scheme I presented for you guys states that the carbon directly attached to the alcohol has to be assigned the lowest possible number. So we will follow the right to left scheme. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that carbon is 6. 7 for this carbon. 8 for that carbon. 9 and 10. Okay? So there you go. We have numbered our parent chain. So we have satisf satisfied the first step and the second step. Third step states to name the longest chain replacing the E ending to O ending. Okay? So let's satisfy the first part of step 3. So name the longest chain. Okay? So it will be a decane, right? But it states that to change the E ending to O ending, so it'll be decanol. So let's change that. Decanol, right? Initially, okay, it was decane, right? But we replace this E right here with this O, okay? So the first part of step three is satisfied. Okay? So we have named the longest chain replacing the E ending to O ending. Okay? So then this part, this piece right here, the next part is basically make sure the carbon number is included when naming the chain. Okay? Again, we're referring to this carbon, the one directly attached to the alcohol. So we have to include this number, number two, as part of the name. Okay? So we have to put two hyphen decanol okay so because what this is if we didn't put two we would not know where the alcohol is located what this is basically saying so far is that we have an alcohol on the second carbon of this 10 carbon chain okay again we have an alcohol on the second carbon on position two of the 10 carbon chain okay so there you have it. That's why we need to put the number here. We have to we have to have the number part of the name. Okay. The fourth and final step. Okay. Now that we have satisfied step three, we have to do we have to list the substituents with assigned numbers alphabetically. So this part is pretty uh, standard and pretty easy. So we have a bromo group here, and we have a methyl group here, right? Because that's a CH three. Okay, it's alkyl group. So we have this methyl group. So you have to list it alphabetically. So obviously bromo will come before methyl, right? Because B become B comes before the letter M. So we'll go five bromo. Okay, so if you have enough space, five bromo. Okay. Um six methyl. Okay, that's a hyphen right there. Two decanol. Okay, so again, let me explain. Um, let's move this a little bit here. Okay, so if you want to separate um, letters from numbers, you put a hyphen. If you want to separate numbers, um, you put a comma in between them. Okay, so that's why I have that's why I have hyphens between each one of these is because you have a number right next to a letter. So again, it'll be five bromo, six methyl, two decanol okay so there you have it that that's uh, that is the way to name um, these types of alcohol groups and again um, if you guys are presented even uh, like crazier looking uh, stru structures more complicated more branched um, way more substituents if you follow the scheme I presented you guys 
um, you guys should be good and be able to um, tackle any type of problem. So just one thing I wanted to say before I end the video is if you have cyclic rings, okay? So if you had a, let's just say that you had a 10 carbon uh, ring, instead of just, instead of stating decanol, you would just change it to cyclodecanol, okay? So you put 5 bromo, 6 methyl, um, uh, 2 cyclodecanol, okay?